Good morning and welcome to this uh, solution and explanation of uh, a prism. Okay, we will do this numerical, uh, which is about a prism which has a refracting angle. But before I, you know, read this question and solve this question, I want to just give you the concepts which are very important. Okay, this is the only channel on YouTube that gives you concepts, explanation before you know jumping straight into a solution. All right, let's get to it. So first of all, understand that you have. So the topic of the day is the prism. Okay, now prism, you know, there. Let me talk about a prism which is called as a dispersive prism okay so what is a dispersive prism you would have seen figures where you have a prism and the light enters there is a normal the light bends strikes the other surface there is a normal and the light goes out right and you would have seen the light splits into a rainbow right now these prisms are using what is called as refraction right so you can see the light is bending the bending of light is used the light enters one phase and it leaves the other phase. So these are called as dispersive type of prisms. I will not get into detail of dispersive prism, but my, I, the idea is to ensure that you are able to understand the question very clearly in your mind. The moment you see the question, clarity should be in your mind as to what type of prism you're dealing with. So you will see some numericals that deal with dispersive prism, right? There's a physics behind dispersive prism. We will talk about it of you know the physics of dispersive prism some other point of time. And then you have a second class of prism, right? So let's say you would have seen these prisms, right? So you have a prism like this, and the the ray of light enters the prism from one surface right which is the surface which is so this is your hypotenuse right it's a right angle this is 45 degree and this is 45 degree this is the hypotenuse of the prism hypotenuse the light enters the light gets you know something like reflection right this is very close to what you call as reflection now if you think about this 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 type of prism you know, what it is doing is these are called as different type of prisms. So these are prisms which are put in category of reflection type of prisms. Okay, so why? Because if you look into a mirror, you know, you, the ray of light strikes the mirror, it comes back. Here, you, what you're doing is you, you, are, you are not using refraction anywhere. The light is entering straight and it is, you know, sort of reflecting. So this type of prism is, is different, right? It is using something like a total internal reflection as a concept. It's a reflection, right? So these prisms use reflection. It's, it's, so this particular example I gave you A, you know, reflected the light by uh, and rotated the light by 90 degrees, okay? The, and the rays struck the hypotenuse. If I were to take another example, which you, which you would see very commonly, is the example of a prism like this. You know, so you have a prism, which is this, and again, same prism. This is now 90 degrees. This is your hypotenuse, right? I just kept it in a different manner. The light enters, goes, because it, there is no... There is going to be no reflection or refraction. It straight away follows the normal. The light turns at this point as a total internal reflection, comes out of the prism like this, right? So you can see two reflections, reflection number one and the reflection number two, right? So this is the first place where the light has reflected. This is the second point where the light has reflected, right? Again, this is 45 degrees, 45 degrees. I'm not getting into maths. I'm just doing something which will help you remember this. This is 90 degrees. This was the hypotenuse. So the light is entering through the hypotenuse. Here the light enters light enters through the hypotenuse right and you can see the overall rotation of the light is 180 degrees in this case the light does not i'm talking about case number a which is this the light does not enter hypotenuse the light you know enters through one of the faces of the prism so this is a phase of the prism you can use this also as a phase of the prism but right now we have used one of them and the light has so if you see this particular prism is a dispersive prism Right? It's a very different type of uh, prism, which uses refraction. The light gets, you know, reflected. The, if it's a white light, it gets dispersed as, uh, you know, seven colors or so. And so this light, the physics is different. Like you, you, you draw uh, and you say, okay, this is the overall bending which the light has shown. And you do some math behind it and you're able to calculate the overall angle of deviation, right? And there is a prism angle given. There is a refractive index and stuff like that. But if you talk about the second type of prisms, which are these, so this is dispersive. The second type of prisms are reflection type of prisms. They, they rotate the light using the principle of reflection. So their job, so if you see these prisms, you know, these two A and B, A prism and B prisms, these are used in optical instruments, optical instruments, instruments. Right. So if you see this type of prism, which is 180 degree, you will see this in periscope, right? A periscope is there in the ship where you want to see the enemy ship and the light comes in, you know, using uh, and you, if you want to see, you know, something like this, this may be used in uh, another optical system, you know, something like a telescope, maybe. Right. So you. Right, so let me just summarize the difference. OK, so you will see two types of numericals, one where you have the prism where the refracting angle is 90 degree. OK, so the these are called as. So you can see, right, the light enters one face and it goes like this, right? This is what I drew. So the angle of prism or the refracting angle is 90 degree, right? The other case I drew was this, where the face was hypotenuse, 
the angle was 90 degrees okay so this is the 90 degree the light enters like this the light you know strikes i told you these are the reflective type of prisms now the key feature of this is that the angle of prism is 90 degree right so the refracting angle refracting angle is 90 degree which means the angle of prism angle of prism a is equal to 90 degrees right this is what it is but what happens if the angle of prism is not 90 degrees okay so the angle of prism is no longer 90 degrees so this is the angle of prism the light enters here the light gets bent you know i will draw a normal to the surface the light is bent and then the light is bent right so the light goes out i told you this is used for the purpose of uh, you know breaking down a monochromatic uh, so to say a white light into multiple uh, wavelengths right so this particular one is called as dispersive the key difference between the situation number a and the situation number b is the angle of prism the angle of prism is not 90 degrees in these cases okay and in these two cases the angle of prism is always 90 degrees the angle of prism or the refracting angle of prism is one and the same thing so we're dealing with situations of 90 degrees and situations which are not 90 degrees when it comes to the angle of refraction of the prism right so this is a basic distinction whenever you look at the question right recognize the question whether the question deals with the angle of prism as 90 degree or the angle of prism is not 90 degree and then decide the way forward so if you can see you know this type of uh, numerical uh, the one we are doing today the, the distinction is that the on the, the angle of uh, refraction is given to be 60 degrees so this is the type of numerical we're doing today and we will the refractive index is known to us and now let's get into solving this problem but i hope it is clear in your mind that there are two types of prism systems one where the angle of prism is 90 degree and the other where the angle of prism is not 90 degree today we are focusing on those question the question where the angle of prism is not 90 degree but 60 degree let's get into detail of that and understand how do we solve these questions thank you right now the most interesting part of the numerical okay so if you look into the problem you know before i solve it again i will tell you the math behind it which is very important so if you are given a prism okay listen to this part of the video very carefully okay this will this is the crux you have this angle of incidence the normal is drawn the ray bends okay you draw another normal the ray bends and comes out right so this is your angle i1 this is your second ray which is you know the angle which it makes with the normal is r1 we label this as r2 and we label this angle which the ray makes with the normal as angle of emergence this is the angle of the prism or the refracting angle in the numerical this is given to be 60 degrees right I, what I will do is I will just connect these two lines and I will say this is A, this is B, this is C and this is D, right? So there are two figures you need to concentrate on. One is the A, B, C, D and this one, okay? So I'm referring to, I will just darken it. So concentrate on A, B, C and D. This is one figure you need to concentrate on. The second figure you need to concentrate on is the triangle B, D and C. You can see this triangle, right? I will just highlight it and maybe I can use a better color to show you. So we are concentrating on this triangle, okay? This triangle is is the second thing you need to concentrate on, okay? And this is the way it looks. I'm just redrawing it for your benefit. So whenever you're solving, you will never forget this. So you can see R1, you can see R2. This is one you have to concentrate on. This is another one. So you can see the angle which this angle, you know, this particular figure is. This is nothing but 90 degrees, right? So this is 90 degrees because you can see this is the surface of the prism and then you know the bc is the normal to it so this is 90 degrees again you can see ad is the surface and then you know the cd is a normal so this is 90 degrees and this is angle a right just for your information in a nutshell this particular angle right which you see here you know if i just extend this this particular angle is also a okay so this angle and this angle is what you should always remember so i'm saying this angle the angle which is particularly the angle drawn here is the angle of this is the angle of prism and i have drawn the same here this also is the angle of prism and you can see this is an external angle and this is linked to this as angle a is equal to angle r1 plus angle r2 right this is very important and i i have consciously done this i have focused on the two figures i will just read you know just emphasize you have to concentrate on this one right and then you have to concentrate on the other one which i just drew for you I'm just re-showing it to you so they never forget it, right? So you can see, right? So I've taken two figures out of this and I've reached to, I'm not doing derivation, but a shortcut for your benefit so that if, even if you're lost, you know, you still remember. The basic equation you need to remember is this, okay? This is a situation, uh, uh, so to say a formula, which is very useful when you're calculating the deviation. And of course you can extend the rays as per your wishes. You know, you can take it forward and you can take it forward. And this is your deviation delta, right? 
but we are not discussing delta in our question we are discussing something else but i wanted to draw your attention to the diagram of a situation of a dispersive kind of uh, prism and you should be able to label it correctly you should be able to correlate with with it correctly i hope this made sense watch it again and again so that you never get the diagram wrong so now the solution right this is the final lesson we will solve the problem i hope you have understood prisms to some extent this is the only channel which is emphasizing explanation over a direct solution you can go to any application you can go to any website you can go to any portal you can go to any purchased application you can attend any classroom any coaching nobody is going to tell you this level of detail which will stay with you for your life so you can clear your entrance examination work on physics inside your home without leaving your home the comfort of home and this level of you know knowledge available to you on youtube on my channel so don't forget to subscribe my channel it's very important 2000 videos already now let's talk about this particular question so you can see this is a case of the face of the prism you know of refracting angle 60 degrees so you can see a is known to you right this is a it suffers a total it just suffers on the other surface we will talk about this what it means and the refractive index so you can see the angle of refraction is not 90 degrees so we're discussing the dispersive kind of situation but we will see it's a you know whether what happens exactly right so i hope you read the question i will draw the diagram now and help you understand how to solve this so this is the scenario right so you have the angle of refraction as 60 degree the ray of light okay and i will use a different color this time so that it's you know different so the ray of light strikes it it i will draw a normal here it bends now if you read the language of the question right it says i will just take you there it says it just suffers total internal reflection just suffers right so let me just tell you what happens in just suffers what is the meaning of the word just suffers total internal reflection right what it means is generally you would expect the you know the ray to come out draw uh, so the ray comes out right and you you would expect this but when it is just suffers okay just suffers the diagram is different and let me redraw the diagram the diagram looks like this so the ray of light will come in this the ray of light will come like this it will bend a bit but now the ray of light instead of going out will graze through the surface okay the second surface this is your second surface given in the numerical this is the first surface so the ray of light now is going like this so this is the way it works okay so this is your 60 degrees right and the ray of light so this is called as you know just suffers total internal reflection which means instead of going out you know you can keep on you know using a different angle here it can it bends and then finally it bends in a way that you know it it grazes along so the english used is grazes along the second surface grazes along the second surface so so one more point which is which should be clear in your mind and i will just use that is that you can apply snell's law at both the surfaces at in fact any surface so point to remember is one can apply snell's law snell's law right at all surfaces of a prism depends what are the surfaces and what in this case surface number 1 and surface number 2 are in bores surface number 1 and so so you can apply a snell's law here a snell's law can be applied here and then of course a snell's law can also be applied here so because you have two reflections right so when it is a case of the ray going like this you can see the angle of emergence right the angle of emergence which is a sec second angle the transmission you know this is a transmission ray this is the incident ray this is right so this is a emergent ray or transmission ray this angle is angle of emergence becomes 90 degrees right and i told you uh, you know if you apply snell's law mu is equal to sin i by sin r you're actually moving from a denser medium to a rarer medium right to a rarer medium so what you're saying is this is 1 upon mu because it's not this is applied when you move from rarer to denser so this is sin of i right which is i2 actually if you remember right this is or or so to say r2 in in the language we've been using sin r2 upon sin of 90 degrees so the sin r2 is 1 upon 1 point let's let's check what is the and what is the refractive index given in the numerical i think the refractive index is 1.524 1.524 right so you can find r2 using sin inverse 1 divided by 1.524 right I, i hope you understand how to apply snell's law right snell's law is used to link the angle of refraction and incidence angle right this this is your angle of incidence and this is your angle of so the sin incident upon sin r is given to be mu right this is the refractive index of the medium in which the refracting ray is there so this is a refracting uh you know ray and it's with respect to air so here it is air here it is glass but in our scenario the, it was glass with respect to air reverse of this so i reversed it here you know so i reversed it i wrote it as 1 by mu this is a normal snell's law this is a snell's law when you moving from rarer to denser rarer to denser you inverse mu and that's it keep the formula same keep incident angle same so now you have understood what is r2 right 
what are you supposed to find? You know, you already know from my, you know, so R1 plus R2 is equal to angle A, right? You know this. R2, you can calculate, you know, you go to sign table and check what is R2 with respect to this, calculate. And then what happens, R1 is equal to, supposingly this comes out to be alpha, right? So angle A is known to you. You can find this also. So R1 is equal to 60 minus alpha, right? So even R1 will be available to you. R1 will have some value which you will get. And now what is your question, right? Your question is, let's move into what exactly has been asked, right? So you have to find the, at what angle should the ray of light be incident, right? This is what you need to find out. So you were supposed to find out the angle of incidence on the first surface so that this whole phenomenon happens. So you're supposed to find this particular angle, right? That's your goal. You have to find this angle so that the ray comes like this, bends and then grazes along, right? You have to find this. Now, if you apply Snell's law here again, it is sine of I1, the angle you need to find, upon sine of R1, the angle you've just found, again equal to 1.524, right? You already know what is R1. Go to the sine and find sine of R1 and sine of I1 is equal to 1.524 multiplied by sine of R1, right? So R1 has not been very easy, you know, difficult to find. I hope the steps are clear in your mind. You applied Snell's law here. Then you found out, since it's a case of just grazing, in the case of just grazing, the emergent angle is 90 degree, right? So I will just summarize how do you attempt this, okay? Just a quick summary. You, what you will do is you will draw this particular diagram and you will say, this is the incident ray, this is my normal, this is my bending, and this is my just grazing along angle, this is my incident, this, and you know, you are supposed to find this angle you know, at what angle you strike the surface number one, so that at the surface number two, just grazing happens. And in the back, back pocket, you have R1 plus R2 is equal to angle A. This is the incident angle. This is your, the R2 angle being referred to, right? This is the R2. This is the normal. This is the ray, refracted ray. This is your R1. This is I. And this, of course, this is the normal. This is the E, right? You applied the Snell's law here, right? In an inverse manner, Snell's law apply, Snell apply first here, apply first here and then apply the same Snell's law here. Apply Snell, apply again, apply again, right? And the angle is known to you, right? I hope this made sense. And of course, you should know how to use sine table, right? Sine tables are very important. You must know how to use sine table so that you can find values like one upon sine of you know, 1.524 and you can find the angle R2. And, and then the, the sequence is once you find R2, using this equation, find R1 because R2 is known, A is known, R1 is found out. And then once R1 is known to you, go and calculate I1 using Snell's law, right? Which is mu is equal to sine I1 upon sine R2. Again, use sine table and find out the value of angle of incidence at the first surface. I hope this numerical made sense, right? I have gone step by step and explained you every step possible so that you don't get confused. And now you will never forget how to do questions where you have to, you know, do this kind of stuff. Prism kind of numericals are not very difficult if you get the logic right. You got the logic right. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. This channel is known for excellent explanations. I don't jump into solutions straight you go to any application any website they jump into a solution without giving you any explanation thank you very much for your time wait for my next video